My name is Savannah Summers, and this presentation will look at the impact of telehealth on the physical therapy profession. In this presentation, we'll briefly look at what the physical therapy profession consists of, how telehealth is defined, and how telehealth could be used in the PT profession. As with any technology or service, there are benefits and challenges to implementing telehealth into PT, and these will be discussed as well. According to the American Physical Therapy Association back in 2016, there were about 204,000 licensed therapists in the U.S. The PT profession is made up mostly of physical therapists and physical therapy assistants. Physical therapists are considered experts in the diagnosis and treatment of movement disorders. They do things like evaluate, diagnose, and provide interventions for deficits in someone's motion, strength, balance, and coordination. Some current informational technologies being used in physical therapy include electronic medical records, different scheduling tools, and electronic outcome tools. And these are things that are used to measure a patient's current functional status as well as predict patient outcomes based on different algorithms. Telehealth is where doctors use different communication technologies to deliver their healthcare services, especially to patients that may live in more rural areas. It's also known as telemedicine in the medical field, and it's typically used with patients who are less complex or patients with chronic conditions who would normally require more frequent follow-up visits. Some proposed advantages include having a lower cost, giving increased access to specialized care, and also being time-saving. Some challenges include the lack of hands-on care that you would typically get from a doctor, as well as reliability and cost of technology. And then there are also reimbursement challenges that come with telehealth. So the physical therapy profession has always been more cautious about implementing telehealth into the profession just because PT has traditionally always been more hands-on. It's also known as telerehabilitation when it's used in physical, occupational, or speech therapies. Again, it's thought to increase access for patients in more rural locations that may not have as many options when it comes to physical therapy clinics. Life expectancy is increasing and PT employment continues to increase, so it's thought that telehealth could help meet this increasing demand for PT. As with anything, there are benefits and challenges that come with implementing telehealth into the PT profession. Once again, the main benefit of telerehab is being able to reach more patients. It would decrease the number of times the patient would have to travel back and forth to the clinic for treatment, and this would save the patient time that they could spend maybe with their family or avoid having to take time off work. The therapist would also save time and be able to see more patients in the clinic, which would help their productivity. Telerehab could also decrease the overall cost of care by preventing costly emergency room visits or possible hospital readmissions, especially in patients with more chronic conditions. Their therapist would be able to more frequently monitor the patient and report any kind of abnormal symptoms or responses the patient has to the pr patient's primary care physician, who could then order medication changes or make other medical decisions. There are some challenges to telerehab as well, and the main one is the lack of hands-on skills the therapist could normally provide in the clinic. They couldn't check for proper muscle activation while the patient is performing exercises, and it would be hard to test things like strength virtually. Therapists also couldn't use many of the skills that they're trained in, such as soft tissue mobilization or dry needling, which is a really big thing in PT right now. They couldn't provide assistance to patients who need help walking or performing their activities of daily living. Another issue is that patients may not have a lot of experience using computers or types of technology. You also have to consider the availability of technology to the patient as well as the reliability of technology. So if you have a slow internet speed or bad connection, your sessions would be affected. With virtual rehab, there would be less of an opportunity for a therapist to establish any kind of rapport or build, in, build any kind of trust with the patient because of the lack of that face-to-face -face communication. Another major issue is the reimbursement for telerehab, especially with Medicare, which currently does not recognize PT as a reimbursable telehealth service. When considering all benefits and challenges of telerehab, we recognize that telehealth should not be used to replace traditional physical therapy. It should be used instead to enhance a therapist's services. Patients with more complex conditions or who need a lot of assistance need to be seen in the PT office. However, telerehab could be used with non-complex patients or patients with chronic conditions to check in on their progress periodically. The therapist would need to be sure to teach the patient how to use the technology required for virtual visits, and they would also need to ensure that the applications used for telerehab protect all patients' privacy and safety. Overall, with thorough planning and execution, telehealth could have a positive effect on traditional physical therapy services.